Welcome to this evening's choral evensong on Holy Trinity Sunday. Our introit will be sung by our choral group, which is now called St. Mary's Choir. The introit is from William Harris's Holy is like the True Light. We have our anthem by Kenneth Turner, O Trinity Most Blessed Light. And our Magnificat and Nun Dimittis are set to Charles Wood's um, setting in E flat. We will be sitting for the psalm and in all cases standing for the glorious. We now stand for the introit.
I have surely seen the affliction of my people which are in Egypt, and have heard their cry by reason of their taskmasters. For I know their sorrows, and I am come down to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians, and to bring them out of that land unto, into a good land, and a large land, into a land that flowing with milk and honey, into the place of the Canaanites, and the, the Hittites, and the Amorites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jeshuvites. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. And Moses said unto God, Who am I? that I should go unto Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt. And he said, Certainly I will be with thee, and this shall be a token unto thee, that I have sent thee. When thou hast brought forth the people out of Egypt, ye shall serve God upon this mountain. And Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, The God of your fathers has sent me unto you. And they say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? And God said unto Moses, said unto Moses I am that I am. And he said, Thus shalt thou say unto the ch children of Israel, I, ha I am has sent me unto you. And God said moreover unto Moses, Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, The Lord God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me unto you. This is my name forever, and this shall be my memorial unto all generations. Here endeth the first lesson.
The second reading is taken from John 3, reading from verses 1 to 17. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest, except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? <coughs> Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, Ye must be born again. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus answered and said unto him, How can these things be? Jesus answered and said unto him, Art thou the master of Israel, and knowest not these things? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, We speak that we do know, and testify that we have seen, and ye receive not our witness. If I have told you earthly things, and ye believe not, how shall ye believe if I tell you of heavenly things? And no man hath ascended up to heaven, but that he came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Here in the second verse. We stand upon the Mount of Mitzvah and remain standing when we say the Apostles' Creed thereafter.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose to them from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitting on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show thy mercy upon us. And grant us thy salvation. O Lord, save the Queen. And mercifully hear us when we call upon thee. Thank you. 
lighten our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from all perils and dangers of this night. For the love of thy only Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, let us pray to the Father, who loved the world so much that he sent his only Son to give us life. In this season of the mystery of thy glory, give us hearts and minds aware and confident of eternal things as we concern ourselves with sustenance and fellowship in our earthly life. Lord, in thy mercy, thy son looked with sorrow and compassion on those who struggled to believe in him and on those who would reject thee, his and our Heavenly Father. Transform our hearts that we too may sorrow with those who are overwhelmed by the material concerns of the world and who struggle to trust thy Son, that we may have compassion for the troubled and faithless. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Thy Spirit came, that all may be filled with thy breath of life anew. We pause in silence as we appeal to thee to inspire the downhearted Comfort the bereaved, empower the weak, and cleanse and heal all who need thy help this night. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. Thou art the Holy Trinity, all knowing, all just, and all loving. We pause again in silence as we appeal to thee to bring pardon to the trespasses against Ukraine and hope for the dispossessed and suffering people of Ukraine. Return to the people of Ukraine, their homeland and their livelihoods. Lord, in thy mercy, hear our prayer. As we raise our prayer to thee, Father, God of all, hear our prayer and make us one in heart and mind to serve thee in the power of thy Spirit and in thy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
wise and respected Jew amongst the Pharisees, was perplexed by the mysteries that Jesus of Nazareth taught. He grappled with those mysteries. Nicodemus resolved to speak personally to this man who identified himself as the Son of God. Nicodemus's conversation with Jesus took place in the secrecy of the night. He asked, how can a person be reborn? A person cannot surely re-enter the mother's womb to be born again. When Jesus died on the cross, Nicodemus publicly identified with Jesus by accompanying Joseph of Arimathea to convey Jesus' body to the tomb. So began a new chapter in his life. He was born again and was among the first followers to see the resurrected Christ. In the same way, people are perplexed by the Holy Trinity. How can one be three in one and one in three? Last weekend, we saw our monarch absent in person from several events she had planned to be present at. Yet, she was never absent. At the Thanksgiving service in St. Paul's Cathedral, she was there in her son and heir. The Archbishop of York addressed her directly in his son, confident that Her Majesty was watching and listening live on the television. At the party at the palace, Her Majesty opened the event despite being unable to attend in person. She was present. Even Paddington Bear was present at tea together. The Queen topped and tailed the four days of celebrations with in-person appearances on the balcony, but she was present in different forms at all other times. Her presence was palpable with everyone celebrating around the world. And so, we have a clue of how we should understand the Trinity, God Almighty everywhere, with and in everyone, sometimes present in the human person, other times in spirit and inspiration and then other times something experienced so overwhelmingly powerful that cannot be fully defined. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We stand to sing the hymn, Father of Heaven, O Love Profound, 174.
for being here today and thank you to Martin, our organist, and our choristers today. This is our last even song for this series, this season, and we resume again in the autumn. The Lord God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, the Holy and Undivided Trinity, guard thee and save thee, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be with thee this night and always. Amen. Amen.